Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Slime Lounge, we've got an unboxing. I love boxes. I love boxes too, especially something from Oscar. From In Mexico. Mexico. In fact, it might even be vegetables. vegetables. I don't know, let's see what it is. <laughs> It's two mirrorless cameras. It's a miracle. We're going to take a look at the A7R3 versus the Panasonic S1R. Well, the A7R3 is probably the world's smallest mirrorless camera. Probably not. And the uh, Panasonic S1R is definitely the world's biggest camera. Probably not. Well, let's take a look at these two cameras and see which one we like. So we're going to start out with these two cameras with our picture quality test and just look at just what the sensor's doing on each of these cameras and how it renders color. That's really the goal. So going to get some shots on both of them and see how they look. First off, these are terrible images. <laughs> Who shot this, these? This was a really rough, it was a rough. We were shoot. having a hard time with yeah. light out there. The light was coming and going, and I just, we wanted some sun, didn't get the sun, and these are just not that great. It was hard to find an, an image that matched, and then, I don't know, we have a lot of excuses that are totally valid. Yeah, they're totally valid. <laughs> Absolutely. But anyways. But anyway, here it is. Image quality. Look at the reds in these two. I love the red in the Panasonic. I just, yeah. it's, yeah, it's the it color just pops. pops. And yeah. her skin, though, looks a little ashen to me a little okay. bit. It just doesn't have, but I think that's this image. I, I'm i not so sure. I mean, the Sony looks a lot more favorable. That's, for, I mean, it truly it does. The skin, yeah. The skin yeah, tones absolutely. look a lot better, but the red doesn't pop quite as much. It has a very kind of washed out feel mm -hmm. about it. We should t talk about the resolution here because the Panasonic is 47 megapixels and the uh, Sony's 42 megapixels and man, you can sure tell on both of these. <laughs> that Panasonic, holy cow, it's like... <sighs> resolution wise, it is, I mean, this is shot at 2.8, right? Yeah, 2.8. 2.8 and I mean, there's, it's sharp, man. These are sharp so images. Sharp. So we're doing our dynamic range test right now and it's overcast. It's not near as sunny as we usually like it to be. But it will start to blow out. We'll start to see exactly where these two cameras, how they compare with each other and where they start to lose uh, the highlights. So we're just doing an over and under exposure, take it back to the studio and process them and just see what we've got. I mean, off the bat, I feel like these two images look really similar. We still have that red thing going on where the Panasonic just pops that color. Yep. Sony, not so much, a little more washed out. I feel like the skin, t skin tone's looking better on the Panasonic in this yes. image. Yep. Um, yeah, very similar overall. I mean, we already start out with, it's a very flat day. We already start out with that sky in the background is just gone, yeah. you know, and that's at a normal exposure. Well, I mean, it's it's clouds, so it's just going to be white no matter what. Yeah, honestly. there's nothing there. Uh, it is a flat day, so as far as dynamic range tests go, this isn't going to tell us as much as it usually does, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. So this is minus two stops? Yeah, minus two stops here. And still looking pretty good on her face. You are starting to see some extra texture. Yep, on the Panasonic. Minus three stops here. Definitely seeing the noise now in the shadowy areas. Yeah. Uh, look, about, look at her eyebrows. These eyebrows in here, how there's oh, this yeah. red cast that's starting oh, yeah, to build right. in there. You're right. You don't really get that on the Panasonic. No. That's interesting. Getting a, and that's, a, that, what, it's, that's in the shadows. Are we getting the same in the deep shadows, not on her face? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but not as, as pronounced as on her eyebrows there. And that's at minus three stops, right? And this is yeah, minus four stops? Minus four stops. Panasonic washed out all of a sudden. I mean, the grain is just so... The grain's very intense. It's but blue look at and this purple. red is now there as on the Sony. It's like, it's like a red eye. <laughs> yeah, interesting. All right, plus one stop. Uh, we're not going to see anything blow out like we usually do here. Plus yeah, one we just stop, don't have those highlights, yeah. you know, like the bright sun on the wall and that or clouds in the background to see. Yeah, plus three stops, we are starting to see some color shift in her skin. Mm -hmm. It's looking a little more yellow. Definitely on the Panasonic looks a lot more yellow. Even on the Sony over here, if you feel like no, it's shoulder. Right. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. They're both shifting yellow at that uh, mm -hmm. plus three. And then we go plus four stops. Yeah, this is both, when they just they fall apart. The cliff. And, you, and you lose all the detail in the brick. Sony has a little more detail in the brick in the background right now. It does just a little bit. But yeah. overall, the image looks pretty similar on her. Very, very similar with regards to dynamic range. Yeah, I would say almost, almost no difference between the two. Almost. So let's take a look at 400 ISO. Very clean. Uh, 800 ISO. If you look at the skin, like look at, uh, at like a cheek or something here, it's just the roll off starts to feel like it's showing 
grain to me and it's just it's not as soft and as and as nice as you want it to be at 1600 i'm going okay this is just way too much grain to me still looks pretty good these are higher megapixel cameras so i feel like they don't perform quite as well in low light as some of the lower megapixel cameras mm -hmm. do 3200 iso yeah you definitely start to see the skin losing detail it's just converting into grain yeah I yep. actually don't, th I don't think 3200 looks super great on this camera, on either of these. And I would say on either of these yeah. cameras. But 6400, uh, yeah, this is pretty grainy. It, it does seem the Sony is winning out a little bit. It seems a little less grainy than the Panasonic. <laughs> 12,800. <laughs> I demand greatness, okay. <laughs> <laughs> at 12,000, at 256,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just we're doesn't just... Look but look at it is interesting. It's more pronounced in the in the Panasonic than it is in the. But the Panasonic also has nicer colors still. Here. It still it definitely <laughs> does. But I will say I'm not as impressed with the low light performance on these either of these as I am on their little little siblings. You know the yeah. S1, the A7 III. I think the I think the S1 looked pretty good. Well, in low this, light, even at the high 12,000 ISO, you know. And that's why the A7 III and the uh, S1 are considered better in low light. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are just got larger sensor, more megapixels. They're not going to handle that. Yeah. We're doing our autofocus test. So we have the model walk towards the camera from a space about 15, 20 feet away and just take as many frames as we can. We have both of these cameras shooting at uh, medium drive. Usually a high drive runs out of buffer too, too quickly. So medium drive. Both cameras seem to be doing well. Most of these images on the Panasonic seem reasonably sharp. I feel like most of them have been, you know, mostly in focus. But I don't know, I wasn't super impressed with that with that run, honestly. It was it's mostly like, sharp, some out of focus. Well, some now we super... are dealing with uh, contrast-based autofocus, right? Yeah. We're yeah, in a very true. soft and kind of a flat yeah. situation. Yeah, it's true. It's that's a tough that's a tough one for cameras because you know, we don't have a bright eye to look at, yep. you know, even though the Sony is hanging on to the eye. Yeah, the Sony is doing really well. And these feel, they feel sharper than the yeah, they, they Panasonic do. do. More. So, I mean, overall, I think that the, uh, the phase detect on this Sony body is working better than the contrast yeah. detect on the Panasonic. We didn't see that as much the last test we did with the S1. And the A7 III, I feel like the S1 actually outperformed a little bit, but the A7 R3 has killer focus, and it it beat that. I think it beat out the Panasonic in this case. Yep. We're gonna take a couple quick video clips with these cameras. The Sony has traditionally been a heavy hitter in the video department; it has a lot of different features. Um, the Panasonic, though, is bringing a lot to the table in terms of it shoots 60 frames in 4K, which is a first, which is better than Sony, better than any other manufacturer. Yeah. This is the first. This and the S1 are the first cameras that shoot 60 4K. Um, it will also have V-Log in the future, and we could compare that with the S-Log, though they both shoot 8-bit internally, so I don't even know if shooting log makes sense if you're doing an internal 8-bit codec. Sometimes you get cameras shooting 4K and it still looks low res, or it's still it's over sharpened, or too much micro contrast or something going on. The Sonys usually look really good. They have kind of a nice, neutral, very clear picture that I like, and the Panasonic here, it's darker for one thing. It's much just darker. out of the box. I will say they both have a very, they both have clarity to them, but it does kind of look like you get more perceived resolution out of the Panasonic. It seems crisper, uh, whereas the brick feels a little more mushy in the Sony. Okay, let's talk about these cameras. Which one do you like? What do you think? It's, ah, oh, man, it's a real toss up between these two. I feel like when we did the S1 and the A7 III, I kind of liked the S1 a little bit better. There were certain advantages in the image, just tiny ones that I liked, and I, I really do like this body. It's big and heavy, which is a disadvantage in some ways. I mean, this isn't gonna work for a lot of people. If you're carrying two bodies, I love all the buttons. I, I think the placement for everything is really smart. I never felt like I was hunting for stuff, or I never yeah. felt my hand was cramped. Super great, but overall really nice. And I like the EVF. The EVF is super clear, and there are a couple other little features that are nice, like the preview button for the exposure and aperture and stuff like that. Whereas neither of us have ever loved the EVF on the, on the Sony line. I mean, the A7R three is better, than uh, what they've had on some of their other cameras, but still leaves a lot not, to be desired. Not, not super clear, not great. But in saying that, you know, the, the Sony really is a high megapixel uh, workhorse of a camera. I think the color is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be adjusted a little bit to make it just a little more pleasing to me, but I think it's a great image. Both of these are really, 
really incredible cameras within that yeah. category. <clears throat> I think anybody that who, that's been using a GH5 for photo or video is going to be really happy uh, switching to probably the S1, honestly, but if they want something higher megapixel, the S1R is going to be great for them. It's going to feel familiar, uh, it's going to feel, you know, the GH5 is a robust camera for the, the sensor size, and this is going to feel the same way, if just a little bit bigger. All right, well, great cameras. Make sure you subscribe here to the Slant Lens. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Join our community group and check out our downloads. We have some great landscape photography downloads. Get into this baby here. These are great landscape uh, cameras. They really are. So check those out at thesunlens.com and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. <laughs>